sure that from seeing the title of this video and just from the fact that we're not looking out of my window at the courtyard discussing the weather, uh, you can see that there is something very different about tonight's video. And that's because there's something I would like to speak to you all about that has been going on in the background for a long time at Leland and that we haven't wanted to talk about because we weren't too sure what was happening and that's got to do with darling Percy who has been unwell for some time. Now I know that a lot of you have noticed that he was unwell. Many people have said that he's looking a little slim um, and clearly his his speech wasn't uh, comfortable and that's why often I was reading out his poems to mummy or Jerry was reading them out because it was quite hard for Percy to speak. Happy birthday dear us beautiful Isabel. May you have many more years filled with good health and happiness. Your achievement greater than the sum of your activities. <laughs> so, may the synergy of the past create a special future which must love your husband, Percy. Oh, that's Percy. lovely, darling. Mm. That? This all started a very long time ago, actually. We were first really aware of it, though there'd been some concerns with Percy's throat before, but really aware of it when we were on holiday in Egypt altogether. And many of you will have seen that video. We were with Curtis and Sarah and Steve, Vivian and Simon. I just, I'm overruled. <laughs> I cannot imagine I'm here. No, no, neither can I. Imagine. I'm so happy to be here with both of you, Percy. Very impressive. <laughs> Ramsey certainly had an ego. <laughs> and we were there in the most beautiful place, surrounded by ancient temples, but poor Percy was not feeling at all well because of his throat. And the, the real difficulties started for him when we were on the boat, which means that we were floating somewhere between Sudan and Egypt with absolutely zero mobile reception. And Percy was having increasing difficulty swallowing. It was 40 degree temperatures and he just couldn't get enough water. And obviously we couldn't get hold of any doctor, so as soon as we got back to dry land, they left earlier than expected with Philip and I. We had planned for them to stay a little longer. And instead of flying back to France where they'd left their car, they flew straight to England to try to immediately get Percy seen, which is why when we landed in Egypt, you probably saw Philip and I rushed off to Burgundy to a wine festival there in a petrol crisis. There was no petrol in France in two cars. But that's why, it's because Mummy and Percy had gone to have Percy's throat seen to in England. At the time, he was told that it was acid reflux, but very, very bad acid reflux that was causing this burning sensation, and he was given tablets to control it. But he wasn't really getting better after that. And at the beginning of this year, in South Africa, he went to the hospital there to really have everything checked. They looked at his throat, um, everything and they came to the same conclusion and told him that although he was in he's been in quite a lot of pain um, that it's something he has to learn to live with and try to manage as best he can after that he just seemed to be getting worse and worse in front of us and whenever we were saying percy i really think that you need this scene to again it is not normal for somebody to be in pain all the time so much that, that they can't eat but anyone who knows Percy, he is the strongest person on the planet. So he's being told that he has to be stoic about it and learn to live with it. He will be stoic about it and learn to live with it. So he just said, no, no, there's nothing that can be done. Uh, I just have to learn to live with it. And, and that's that. But around him, we were all incredibly worried. And we felt that it really wasn't getting any better. So Quite recently, Jerry and I decided we were staging an intervention and we booked him in with a specialist for um, the throat in Cambridge in England. And that's why Mummy and Percy left a few weeks ago to go for tests. Actually, just a couple of weeks ago, it's all happened very fast um, because the moment that uh, specialist saw Percy, he, he put a camera down, had a look at his throat. He said that there was huge uh, swelling, a complete constriction in his throat. That's why he wasn't able to eat. Um, and that the speed at which that growth must have appeared, because he had the reports from February when Percy had been seen, said that in his expert opinion, uh, it was cancer and that he needed immediate treatment. 
uh, that he need, and that the fastest they could do in England was to have the biopsy within two weeks and radiotherapy starting within four weeks. So, as you can imagine, we we've just all been in a complete, uh, just a complete fluster. And he was told that he could not fly anywhere. He had to cancel all future travel plans. But Percy asked, he thought he could get seen quicker in South Africa. So was it worth making a flight to South Africa to start treatment quicker? And the doctor said, yes, he could fly to South Africa and start treatment there. So they flew on Sunday, a week ago today. Gosh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at Philip who, who's filming. It's just been a complete whirlwind. So he flew uh, with my mother last Sunday and um, he was seen for a biopsy on Monday and she, they said that they were they were going to test for throat cancer in the biopsy and uh, one of Percy's sons, who is a surgeon, in fact two of Percy's sons are surgeons, said that he also wanted them testing for tuberculosis of the throat that we'd never heard of as well so they said they would run tests for that as well and we finally got the results the day before yesterday. Um, and they said that, well, I'll start with the absolutely great news. Percy does not have cancer, which is unbelievable because it was really a specialist who said that he, he felt it was cancer and he needed immediate treatment. But honestly, that specialist has probably saved Percy's life because of what he said. Everything started to act very quickly and they discovered that Percy does have tuberculosis of the throat, which is incredibly rare. Um, the, the surgeon who's been treating him in South Africa says that in 20 years, he's never seen it. Tuberculosis is obviously a disease that was very prevalent in the past, but almost eradicated, uh, making a bit of a comeback, but generally it's known as, as a disease of the lungs. Um, and that is why people weren't spotting it. It's just unbelievable. It is an extremely serious illness, but critically, it is curable. And so it's very long to treat. It takes six to nine months to be able to treat it. Percy is currently in hospital. They have started treatment. Mummy is with him. I will, as soon as I can, go and uh, visit them, which will be probably after my birthday, because until then we have guests coming each weekend. But then I should be able to go for a couple of days to be with them. We are... Uh, it's it, I, I can't really describe our emotions. It's a complete whirlwind. We are incredibly relieved. Above above everything else, we are relieved. I also want to cover Percy's son in kisses, the genius who said test for tuberculosis of the throat. And everyone was like, well, okay, but no one's really heard of it. Just I think he has he's saved his father's life. Um I, I really think that uh, it was that serious. Um so he has been told that it's very, very slow for the medication to start to take effect with tuberculosis. So we can't expect an overnight recovery, but uh, that it is curable, he is on the right treatment, and critically, tuberculosis does explain all of the symptoms that he has had, absolutely everything. I feel able to talk about it now. Obviously, I didn't want to say anything until we knew what was happening. And Percy told me yesterday that I can tell everybody what is happening. So this is very much coming from Percy. He is the one who wants you all to know. And also, just to let everybody out there know, and it's one of the big reasons that Mummy and Percy wanted me to speak to you, which is that if you are told that you have something that you just have to live with and that there's there's absolutely nothing that can be done about it but you are getting worse and worse keep on going keep getting it looked at and don't just ignore it because if he had continued to be stoic which it is his nature to be then it, it would not have been found so it, it is really really important to keep getting things checked out we're so relieved that we found out what it is and that Percy's getting treatment in hospital and hopefully he won't have to be there too long, but we have no idea how long he will have to be in hospital yet. Uh, we haven't talked about dates yet. Um, there, I, I've been very up and down um, in all of this, as we all have. Everybody in the chateau adores Percy and it's affected every single person here. My mother clearly has the best taste in men because my father 
I adored and was just the best man on the entire planet as far as I was concerned. And there she, she, she's gone and found another one. It's incredible. Who knew that two such men could exist and my mother would just find both of them. But no one could ask for a better stepfather than Percy. He is just the most wonderful man and I love him so much. And I'm thinking of him absolutely all the time, every second of every day. You may have noticed over the last few weeks, some of the videos have been going out a little bit later than usual. We've been getting all of the videos out, but a bit, a bit later uh, sometimes. And that's because I just haven't been on the ball with my editing in the same way as before. There won't be a Caddo at the Chateau this week. Also, we have the patron days uh, coming up. The day after tomorrow, they're starting. And that's going to be lovely, but I do want to let all of the patrons who are coming know that Mummy and Percy won't be here. They very much wanted to be here. They're absolutely with us in spirit. They will be watching um, all of the recordings from the patron days. Um, they wish that they were here, but they, they absolutely can't be. There is only one thing that they need to do right now, and that is to focus on getting Percy better as soon as possible. I will add, because I, I know a lot of people will be concerned, um, that tuberculosis is contagious. However, it is um, the tuberculosis of the lungs, because people cough and splutter, is um, rather contagious, much less so when it is of the throat. And all of us at La Lande have been vaccinated for TB long ago. It's just part of the normal vaccination program in the UK. And in fact, in every country, we've checked with everybody in the house. And uh, my mother, because she spent so much time with Percy, uh, is having uh, skin tests for tuberculosis. She's also had chest uh, chest tests and, and blood, I think. And uh, so far, everything's looking clear for mummy. So the, our only concern is getting Percy healthy as soon as possible. I do have to say that this is absolutely typical for Percy, because as you know, he's rather a dapper gentleman, a man of a, of a bygone age in many ways with his manners. Uh, he's a true gentleman. He has recently taken up poetry. As you all know, we've heard his poems. This has been a bit of a concern because I mean, many of you will only have heard of tuberculosis because it was called in the past consumption. And so many famous people have had tuberculosis, including writers, poets, artists, actors and actresses. Chopin, who lived 20 minutes down the road from La Lande, also had tuberculosis, as did the actress Vivian Lees. And that's getting very recent. And George Orwell, I mean, it's incredible. Almost anyone you think about in the past. Looking around this room, I think the answer to what was ailing Percy was staring us in the face the entire time in the library. I mean, just in this section of our books, what do Alexander Pope, Samuel Johnson, all of the Brontes, Charlotte, Emily, Anne, and their brother, Bramwell, John Ruskin and John Keats have in common. They all had tuberculosis. I have told Percy that I feel he was taking his poetical ambitions a little bit too far with this and he has promised to stop writing poetry until the tuberculosis is completely cleared up. Thank goodness we are living in a time when it is curable. I never thought, and Murray was saying the same thing, we never thought we would be happy about tuberculosis, but that is the way we're feeling right now. It's a relief for me to be able to talk to you all about this, but at the same time, I'm very sorry because I know many of you watch The Chateau Diaries for escapism, for something light and happy, and I don't like having to share things like this with you, but more than anything else, this is a diary of our life and and I do want to share our life with you and for you to know what is happening with the family and with everybody in it. And I know that many of you care about Percy very deeply and, and he knows that too. And it means the world to Mummy and Percy, just how lovely you are to them and about them. And many of you have met them and gone up to them and chatted to them. And thank you all for that and for all of the support that we always get from you. I do, however, want to leave you on a happier note if you were tuning in today. So I will leave you with just a little snippet of last night's guest dinner. I'm all ready for dinner and I'm particularly looking forward to this evening's dinner because my aunt and uncle will be joining us with the guests. And I have to say that my guests throughout the summer didn't know about all of the health problems that Percy was having. They haven't known the worries that everyone in the house has had because everyone adores Percy. And 
It's been very much on our minds all the time, but I want to say a huge thank you to every single one of our guests who's been here this summer, because every weekend you have brought light, sparkle, cheerfulness and happiness to La Land, and I've thoroughly looked forward to the evenings with all of you, and I have ended every evening feeling better than I did at the beginning. I know that you were all coming here for your holidays, but I don't think you've realised how much good you've done for us at a very difficult time. What treats are in store, Maria? Found me again in my dishevelled pre-service. Fix. You look beautiful as always. Uh, well, I did this one for uh, the Brazil Day uh, dinner. So it's uh, marinated uh, andives, and then either avocado or ricotta with sage, mm. and then we have grapefruit and lots of herby, flowery things. Delicious. To go with it. Yeah. So, so lovely like and fresh. Vinegary and honey on the... Mm. Mm. All good. Okay, see you later. See you later. It's a pink delight. The idea was with, like, Barbie, we did it last week. Yes, but yeah. soft. It's super gentle. Less, no, hot pink. The way of doing Barbie on a daily basis. Yeah, that's no, but have you noticed how the pink pulls out the pink in the wallpaper? That's what I was going for. <laughs> <laughs> because it's... of the pink in your phone. Thank you. I do try to match. Now, how bizarre is this? August. 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 The hottest month of the year. And we're cold. Yeah. It makes no sense. So Amory thought, just to take the edge off, you put a little fire. But I do find myself gravitating towards it. The fact that you make life beautiful on just a normal weekly basis makes such a difference. I think you do. Second thing you look wonderful, darling. Thank you. Mm. Happy birthday, fire. Just going to leave it on super low with one little log. Yeah, I think... We should do it. As soon as that's caught, we can turn it down. Yeah, because if that gets high, um, exactly. we will be in a sauna. <laughs> it might not be summer outside, but... <laughs> yeah, it's somewhere on our plate. Yeah. Yeah. The main, we have a uh, chicken feta and prune roulade, or a turkey... Uh, spinach and fruit <laughs> uh, with a uh, mustard and maple syrup potatoes and green beans and the sauce is plum prune and red wine Gosh. wow <laughs> thank you you're a beautiful sight opposite me Oh. You're a little ray of sunshine. That's even next to the flamingos. You're outshining the flamingos. That's so easy. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 Salute. Salute. So we can all end on a cheers to Percy's health because after all, in France, you literally say santé, which is health.